That's it. Last one. You've been a very brave boy, Lucas. Can you hold that there yeah. for a moment? Oh, it doesn't get any easier. I wish it was me having the injection. Every mother says that. At least I'll soon forget about it. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Right then, home time. Oh. See you in a month's time. Well, actually, I start back to work next week, so it might be my mum. Well, I'm just hopeless with kids. Every time I pick my little niece up, she cries. That's what babies do. You just need to distract them, give them a bit of stimulation. That's my lunch. Visual stimulation, watch. Bit of movement, bit of colour. Babies are fascinated. Oh, terrified. Have you ever seen that um, uh, Robin Williams movie? Mrs Doubtfire. No, Patch Adams. Watch it! Very impressive. So that's how you get women to go out with you? Make a complete frat out of yourself. Ha uh ha! -huh. <laughs> well, hello down there. Uh, uh, hello. And who might you be? Rana, um, a mystery, Dr Mystery. Of course you are. My daughter's told me all about you. Really? Oh, so this is Riverside. Lots of pretty colours. Very jolly. Um, can I help you? Yes, I'm here to see Dr. Powers. Do you have an appointment? Oh, I don't think I need an appointment. What the hell are you doing here? You just see her. You just see her. Who? Caroline's mother. Oh. Come on. Too late. You missed her. Why didn't you call me earlier? There was no time. Well, what's she like? Oh, dead posh. And dead sophisticated. I'll tell you something, she reeks of money. Trust you. And Rana made such a good first impression. You just wait till you meet her. Do you think they belong? Well, Caroline's got a patient in five minutes. <coughs> the machine will get it. Hello, this is Riverside Surgery. I'm afraid there's no one available to take your call, but if you wish to make an appointment, please leave your name, number, and a short message, and we'll get back to you. This is cute. Small. You mean small? No, intimate. People should be comfortable. <laughs> You've changed your hair. Uh, yeah. Do you like it? Mmm. It's nice. Yeah, well, you never liked it when it was curly. Just takes some getting used to, that's all. So, tell me about Rana. What? Those lovely big brown eyes. <laughs> Is there anything going on between the two of you? Oh, for goodness sake. Well, why not? He's cute. You could put him in your pocket. We're just friends. Right, just friends. Your sister says you've been made a partner here now. When did you speak to Star? A few weeks ago. <laughs> Lucky her. Oh, come on. It hasn't been that long. We stay in touch. Oh, I wouldn't call a couple of postcards staying in touch. You even forgot my birthday last year. I did not. I distinctly remember. I sent a card and a present. Yeah, well, I never got them. Well, I sent them. You sent them to the Manchester address, didn't you? Oh. I haven't lived in Manchester for over two years. How is Eddie? What? OK, OK. We won't talk about him, either. You do this all the time, don't you? What? Am I not allowed to see my eldest daughter? You could pretend to be happy to see me, you know. I am. I just need a bit of warning so I can batten down the hatches, that's all. Oh. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> it won't happen next time. Yeah, well, you're here now. I'm so glad to see you doing so well. Look, 
I'm sorry to sound rude, but I do have patients to see. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Um, speaking of which... What? I could use a prescription for some pills. Tranquilizers by any chance? Oh, no, no, no. HRT. I'm just curious. You always said that you sailed through the menopause, no problem. Oh, well, I exaggerated a little bit. You know, when your father died, it was very difficult on me. You know that. So when my doctor in California recommended HRT, it was like a new lease on life. I had so much energy. I felt like a new woman. Well, that's good. <laughs> yes. And then there's the sex, of course. Thanks. Hmm? Uh, oh, did you think I was all dried up? N no. <laughs> no, of course not. I, well, I, I'm glad that you've <laughs> and got... And it's a... very good sex as well. Fine. Uh, well, if you can remember what type of HRT you're taking, then I can prescribe it. Oh, I think I've embarrassed you, haven't I? No. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. And you do have real patience to think about. Well, I'll, uh, we'll just do lunch sometime, all right? I'll make the reservations. You tell me when. Half an hour? Oh, perfect. Perfect. Um, soon after we got home, it must be the vaccination. Please, I'm, I'm really worried. OK. I'll get a doctor to come out to you as soon as possible. Don't worry. That was Chrissy Devonish, a little boy, as a temperature. That's babies for you. No, wait. I gave me three-month vaccinations this morning. Then he might well have a temperature. She's really beside herself. I told her a doctor would visit. Oh. Sorry. Well, I, I would send Caroline, but knowing her psychotic aversion to anything in nappies... She's uh, out with her mum anyway. Her mum? Oh, I didn't know she had one. Oh, she's got one, all right. And? Oh, she seems lovely. But I don't think her daughter would agree. The woman who produced Caroline Powers. Her I must meet. Right, I'm off. One of you will have to make a house visit, yeah? So? Well, I've got loads of paperwork to do. It's Chrissy Devonish's baby. Why, well, what's wrong? She's really worried about his temperature. He had jabs this morning. Oh, well, uh, I don't mind going. What a surprise. Is that the woman who was in earlier? You noticed, then? Well, hard not to. I'll go if you like. Uh, but I thought you said you... Yeah, we'll keep. Why don't you boys draw lots? Nah, let Steve go. I wouldn't want you to get the wrong idea about me. Too late for that. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I forgot. The Jane Powers makeup check. <laughs> well, it doesn't hurt to take care of your appearance. Of course. That is, if you don't want to remain single for the rest of your life. Uh huh. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> oh, uh, two glasses of champagne, please. Nothing? I'll just have the soup, please. You must have more than that. Why? Because this is meant to be a very good restaurant. And anyway, you should eat properly. I do. All right. Uh, I'll have the sea bus. Good. <coughs> so will I. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I must say, Leather Bridge is certainly coming up in the world. This place is very smart. Yeah, well, most of us around here make do with meat pies and mushy peas. That's not what I meant. I know what you meant. Well, if our first meeting in two years is something to celebrate, we should drink to it. Cheers. Cheers. Mm-hmm. 
Hi, Dr. Rollins. I'll come in. Mm. May I have another one of these, please? Not for me, thank you. Ah. Do you remember Pamela Grant's son, Ashley? He was always very spotty. Had a big crush on you. Vaguely. Well, he's just gotten a job as a consultant at one of the big London hospitals. Oh, here we go again. I'm just saying that. He's a year younger than you, and he has a whole department working under him. Can't I do anything right? Of course you can, darling. I'm very proud of you. Well, anyway, let's talk about you. How's the business? Ah, it's going quite well. You always knew that I felt it was my duty in your father's memory to keep the family business going. Yeah, of course. It's been hard work, but... Oh, yeah, it must be tough, doing all those property deals from Miami Beach. I'm sorry. So how's your social life? What do you mean? Well, you mentioned your sex life earlier. Not that I want to go into any gory details or anything, but are you seeing someone? Uh, well, uh... <laughs> it's, um, it's actually a little bit more than that. Yeah, it's got a bit of a temperature, but... Yeah, I thought so. You're so hot. It's 102. Oh, that's high. Well, that's probably a minor reaction to the jabs. You sure? Yeah. If you do get worried, just give the surgery a ring. There you go. He's happy enough now, aren't you? Um, do you want a coffee before you go? Yeah, I'd love one. I've got a few minutes. His name is David, and we're going to be married in a fortnight's time. And I, I, it would mean a great deal to me if you would come. Really? Of course. <sighs> Two weeks? Yes. Well, when did you meet this man? <laughs> Six months ago. Well, you haven't wasted much time, have you? Well, we're very much in love, and I... <laughs> I see. I'm dying to have you meet him. I know you'll love him. Well, what did Stella say? She's booking a ticket right now. Right. You will come, won't you? Where is it? Well, it's in a registry office, not very far from here. Oh, please, come. I'm not sure. Your blessing means a great deal to me. Yeah. And your blessing was important to me when I got married. What's but that? did I get it? No. What's that supposed to mean? Cast your mind back. You might remember receiving an invitation for my wedding. Of course I do. It was unforgivable. I should have been there. Yeah, but you weren't, were you? No. Do you know how that made me feel? Darling, it had nothing to do with you. It was my wedding. You know how I felt about Eddie. Don't! He hurt you very much, didn't he? What do you care? I'm gonna get some air. Jack, are you okay? Not really. Take a seat. It's, it's not Joe, is it? I need to see Mac. He's not here at the moment. Can I help? No. He'll be back in a moment. I'll, um, I'll make you a cup of tea. Caroline, don't just walk away. Caroline! You're overreacting. Oh, yeah, Caroline in the wrong again. What a surprise. Why do you always take things so personal? Because it is personal. I wear the wrong clothes. I've got the wrong job. I married the wrong man. You are the one who said that Eddie was the wrong person. Why can't you just accept me for what I am? You are acting like an adolescent. Oh, that's rich coming from you, acting like a lovesick teenager. <laughs> Don't forget to get that little last jab in. 
Your father spoiled you, that's the problem. Look at us. Just look at us. How long did it take us this time? Oh, baby. So I start back on Wednesday. I'm gonna miss Lucas, but we really need the money, so. Who's looking after him? My mum, she only lives around the corner. Oh, it's Mark. He was really worried about Lucas. How is he? Oh, he's fine. He's, uh, he's just got a bit of a cold and probably a minor reaction to the jab. You wouldn't listen, would you? What are you talking about? It's your fault. It's these. That's what's making him ill. She never stops. It's one after the other. Mark! She won't stop. I gave up smoking for her. It wasn't easy, but I was told it would help her to get pregnant. Oh, yeah, I don't think the doctor needs to... So I stopped. I haven't had a cigarette since. Uh, great. Well, I'd better be off. Chrissy! Oh, no, no, no. She smoked before she was pregnant, she smoked while she was pregnant, and now she puffs away like a chimney morning, noon and night. That's not true! I'll, I'll let my... Sorry, which part of that story have I got wrong? As soon as I knew I was pregnant, I cut right down. Oh, big deal. She cut down from 60 to 10, and now you're back where you started. I really ought to be off. Look, you're a doctor. You tell her exactly what damage she's doing to my son. I'm not, am I? I'm only trying to keep my family together, that's all. Oh, Caroline, I've always felt so excluded. It was bad enough having to live in England, but feeling like a foreigner in your own family. Oh, for goodness sake, break out the violins. Who exactly is this man, anyway? <laughs> well, his name is David Wilde, and uh, I, uh, <laughs> I won him in a raffle. <laughs> You what? <laughs> it was one of those charity nights in London. Everyone was buying tickets and he was the prize. Dinner for two. I haven't been this happy since I first met your father. Look, can we just sit down and talk about this calmly? I'm really going to see what chain smoking has to do with her going back to work. She has to lose some weight. I put on a lot of weight when I was expecting Lucas. If I'd stopped smoking after he was born, I never would have got it off. There are other ways. I work in a shop. I have to wear the stock. It's designer stuff. If I don't look good in it, then I'm out. You still shouldn't rely on smoking to stay thin. I keep telling you, I have to work. We need the money. Oh, well, it is an expensive habit. Well, you're going to bully me now as well? It's hardly bullying. I'm giving you advice as a doctor on your health. Besides which, have you any idea of the effect of smoking on your child? At last! I haven't done him any harm! Children exposed to passive smoking experience more ear infections than other kids. Are you listening to this? Do you understand what you're doing to Lucas? I don't have to put up with this. All secondhand smoke contains cancer-causing chemicals. Passive smoking is also thought to increase the risk of children developing asthma. But there's no proof! There's your proof. Listen to him. Thanks. Uh, here's the invitation. Please, think about it. I still don't understand what the hurry is. Well, I'm not getting any younger, am I? Yeah, but still. When a man like David asks you to marry him, you don't hang around. So what does he do? He's in the brewery business. Right. And? And, uh... <laughs> He's a real romantic. And a gentleman. He does all those... Lovely little things I thought men stopped doing years ago. We're going on an around-the-world cruise for our honeymoon. Wow. So, who's paying? <laughs> Why should that matter? You are. But I want to. There you go. Take a seat. I don't understand. I really... Um, I don't know where to begin. I really thought I knew my girl, Mac. I brought Joe up to know what was right. Now I don't know her at all. She lied and she let you take the blame. Why didn't she say something? Because she was scared. 
So what does that say about me and how I brought her up? How could she do this? That's all I've been able to ask myself ever since you told me. How could she? Jack, this is not your fault. What she did was wrong, indisputably. But what does it tell you about her? That she's compassionate, that she cares? I'd say you brought them up pretty well. I've lost my mum, and now I'm going to lose my daughter. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> come on, come on. Oh, I can't get through to her. You're a doctor. Tell her to stop smoking. I've told her the facts. The rest is up to Chrissy. Well, I don't want to be drawn into a marital squabble. I've got better things to do. At the end of the day, Chrissy, it's your decision. But my son is being affected by it as well. You're his doctor. Don't go lecturing me about my professional responsibilities. There's no evidence that really... Oh, come on, you're fooling yourself, Chrissy. Now, I've told you the consequences of smoking around your baby. You have to decide what to do next. See? Oh, I've had enough of this. Why don't you tell the doctor about your dirty habit and why we're so broke and why we have to sell our house? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You know what I mean. This man spends half his salary at the casino. You got any advice for him? This isn't getting us anywhere. That's because she won't listen to reason. She's an addict. So are you! Will you both sit down and shut up? Yeah, cigarette. Smoking is an addiction. And it can be as difficult to kick as heroin. And you can only give up for yourself, not anybody else, not even Lucas. Oh, that's ridiculous. Surely Lucas should be all the reason she needs. Will you please let me finish? If she only gives up for him, then she'll end up cursing Lucas every single time she needs a cigarette. And you wouldn't want that. And I don't think it'd work anyway. So you're saying the baby doesn't matter? <sighs> Are you listening to me at all? Of course I'm not. All I can do is give you the information, then it's up to you. You have to decide about the risks. And him? What, the gambling? Yes. Do you have a problem? I um, don't want to talk about it. Right, well, if you do, then I'm perfectly willing to see you about that. But first of all, can we just deal with this smoking thing? Now, the research into passive smoking is beginning to point in one direction. The smoke from a cigarette is going to be inhaled by every single person in the room, and yes, they may suffer as a consequence. But Lucas is healthy. Yes, he is, now. But at his age, the risk of bronchitis or pneumonia is far greater if he's exposed to smoke. And what about cot death? Well, yes. I don't want to be a scaremonger, but it is a factor. And the more you smoke each day, the greater the risk. Well, I try not to smoke around Lucas. Good. But you're not saying that it's... 50 years ago, people thought that smoking was healthy. It clearly isn't true. If I had kids, I just wouldn't take the chance. Look, I know this isn't easy, but I'm sure when you meet him, you'll understand why I feel the way I do. Yeah. So, I thought maybe tomorrow evening you are free, aren't you? Uh, I'm sorry. I, I've got people from work coming around for dinner. Oh, but that's great. Then two more won't matter, will it? But you won't know anyone. Oh, but that doesn't matter. Uh, I'll have a chance to properly meet all your colleagues. You'll be bored. We'll be talking shop. No, it'll be interesting. And anyway, it'll be a lot easier for all of us if there are other people there. Yeah, but I don't think... Uh... What time is everybody coming? Uh, eight o'clock. Good. We'll be there. i better drop you back. What'd she put you through? You gave that girl her first job. You supported her in spite of everything. You could have spent years in prison because of my daughter. I didn't go to prison. No thanks to her. And the worst, the thing I can't forget, is she caused Kate to lose her baby. No, you can't say that. Yes, I can. It's about responsibility. It's about facing up to the consequences of your actions. And right now, it's about moving on and helping Joe. You have... We have to be very careful with her. She needs all the support she can get. She's not going to be able to go on with her life unless she faces up to what she's done. Jack. Honestly and with dignity. 
I'm going to the police. No, wait. I'm going to tell them everything. It's the only way I can help put things right. It won't bring Jessie back. It won't help anyone, especially not Joe. She's been through enough. So have you. It won't help me either. I've made up my mind. Jack, why are you doing this? I have to. Is it for me? Or is it for you? It's for Joe. Right, so you're saying you do want to give up? Yeah. Well, that's the first step. Look, I know it sounds really stupid, but being a smoker is like being part of me, and I, I can't imagine not sitting around with my mates, chatting, drinking coffee, and not puffing away. I know it's difficult at first, but it does get easier. You'd be amazed how many people successfully kick the habit. You know, I'd never forgive myself if my smoking harmed Lucas. I know. If it makes you feel better, I'm sure you can do it. You may need help from, from other people in the same situation as you, but, you know, we're, we're starting a stop smoking group at the surgery. Is there any chance you'd be interested? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Good. And, um, I'm sorry I shouted. <laughs> oh, no, we're sorry. And, um, I will come in to see you next week. That's okay. You have to look at the bigger picture. I could have told the police about the prescriptions. You should have done. No, I took the view as a professional that was not the way forward. So what are you saying? Leave it. No, let me deal with it as a doctor. No. In my book, you do wrong, you pay for it. Well, hasn't she? You are not thinking straight. And you're not hearing me, Dr Maguire. Jack, don't. Let me go. So you will come. OK, you persuaded me. We'll meet in the bar opposite. Nine, OK? Yeah, fine. Jack, Jack, please don't do this. 